We are standing in the sacred waters of the Kim Tu indigenous peoples tribal grounds. And I would like to state that there is a huge difference between blue green water and blue green algae in the water. And if you notice waterways and you notice this water in different rivers in July in Trinity in Humboldt County, for instance, there is blue-green algae warnings uh, that is a highly toxic algae that accumulates in the water due to too many foreign nutrients in the water from the hillsides due to mining and logging. When you cut down all the trees, that allows all the dirt at the roots and the nutrients to come down the mountains as silt into the water, which creates um, a bad mix for the environment so the blue-green algae thrives because it is like any plant. It sucks up the sun, but it's in the water. So if the trees and the bushes and different things are actually blocking that sunlight, then it also actually fights as a natural um, thing against the blue-green algae. In this creek here, there is no blue-green algae. None. And yet, this is basically, you know, a pretty small little creek. Not a raging river. Not that deep. No rapids. There's no hard water pushing stuff away. Now you see there is mold here. I mean moss. But that is a natural moss that is supposed to be in this region on that rock. And it helps um, shelter and feed these fish that are extremely abundant in this creek. And the uh, minnows and different um, insects and things that, that thrive in these areas. Um, salamanders extinct salamanders, extinct animal species that have never been found will be found in creeks like this and this one and out here again. These are ancient tribal lands and this is a sacred water spring of the Kim Tu peoples. Now I want to look this way. And I don't know if the video really picks this up or not well, but you can see this green canopy here. And then you can see these huge trees. So this looks like a green canopy highway, and that it is. This is all the creek, and it is 100% covered by these 10 plus foot tall natural uh, region plants that in theory should be here. And it is the same with these trees. Now, modern man, civilization, would in fact cut all of the trees, including all the ones that you see along the sides of the creek, and they would build their factories and their farms along the creek, and they would suck up all the water, and they would release all of their feces and uh, waste waters back into the creek, which causes all of the um, erosion and, and uh, bad water and different um, issues with water quality. Water like this, I challenge, you could shove your head in and drink and probably not get sick. This water, even though it has been industrialized already, even though I'm in the wilderness, industry has been here and this is federal property and they have already built things and dumped their trash in here. This water is 90% cleaner than the Trinity River, the Van Dusen River, and um, probably the Klamath River, which is full of uranium, for the record, and other um, waterways around here, because I can clearly see blue-green in there. And it's just crystal clear, clean quality water, and the amount of the abundance of fish and just cleanliness in the water compared to the Trinity River or Clear Creek or any of our waterways and these watersheds out here. Um, it's just night and day.
and I can see why indigenous peoples, besides everyone needing access to the water, would come to certain areas like this. And I'm trying to keep this whole rant on theme. Back to these plants and civilized person would cut down the trees because look at them, they're everywhere, right? And, and we all know that things drink water so there's only a little bit of water and the industries or businesses or people want the water so if they cut down all the trees and green all along it then that won't be sucking up the water that is kind of the naive person's common sense thinking the physical reality the way that nature works and the way the world works is in unison and so what's going on over here, where you see there's billions of plants, 10 feet tall, you cannot even see the water. What's going on here, and let's use this bit of magic as an example, look in between my fingers here. That's magic, okay? Now that magic is God, and God, you want to get a good look at him, go right ahead, is up there, beaming down. And he built this planet with water, okay? And then he built the firma. And then he built us. And then he said, all that is green is good. He didn't say chop it down. He didn't say put giant cows right here so they could eat it all up. I know I'm going on a rant here, but I'm just being sarcastic. So the point is, is that the green, if you go back in that order, follows the water. It protects the water. The sun, God, upper, shines down, hits the water, makes the water disappear. Green, human. See, see, it's a, it's a sequence. And so, even though I just created this word for word, I, I'll imagine that, right? This, this person here speaking is uh, so intelligent. Not really. I know. It sounds like babbling, but it's actually, rewind the tape. It's all very clear. A lot of people believe in this concept called God. And a lot of people that argue that God exists call him the sun. It, it, either which way, the, the point I'm trying to make, the parable here, is the same. That the sun beams down on the water. Remember my magic spot here? And it disintegrates it. So all of this is actually being disintegrated by, and I don't know the actual math, you know, let's say 10 gallons, 100 gallons, 500 gallons a minute, an hour. That's a lot of water. It's going to be, all the surface area is being evaporated. And so, over here, not one iota of the surface area is being evaporated. The environment under these leaves is circulating the moisture and creating uh, like a fog and a mist inside of this cavern here that the that has been created, which allows a whole new um, environment for different types of bugs and plants and different things that are going to be able to um, survive in there. And that is a whole nother, you know, issue of how many different things can be created if one thing survives, then something else can eat it, and then something else can eat it, and then they all poop, and then things can grow out of it. So it's the same story over here. When you've provided a new environment, you've provided a lot of new things. And to add to it, the water is no longer being evaporated. So back to the original reason why people would want to get rid of the green stuff that's taken up all the water is because, yes, of course these things drink water. Now I can, again, I cannot give you the exact numbers, but I speculate that the fact actually is that there is more water being saved, conserved, by all of this green bushes and trees drinking up all the water on the waterway than if you cut all of these down and allowed them to be open. Because as a result, and you can just look anywhere in the world, look at a dry creek bed. There's no trees on the side of it. It isn't because there's no water and the trees died. It's because the trees got cut down and then the water evaporated and now there's no water. So you have to dig down and that's why the governments have wells. So back to this. So, if you, the landowner, you, the farmer, you, the government, you, the land manager, ever have the opportunity to control a waterway, 
realize that it is your bad management that is making all the water go away. Not the people drinking the water, but the person who said, we need to cut down all the trees and we need to clear out all of the green stuff. And there's a lot of green things that block waterways that are invasive plants, and that's a different subject. This right here is a natural environment, natural plants that, um, you know, this is this is the this is what they, this is their region, and that would be the same application would work for branches and bushes and logs that all fall into the water are great. That's it's a natural ecosystem to add to that, by the way. And this is why this water is absolutely so clean and, and good for you and a sacred spring because of all of these green things that are actually cleaning the water. Uh, the government even has their science research that says every so many feet per sunlight per water cleans out so many you know microns or whatever of chemicals and dangers and toxins and stuff so the same thing applies with this dead branch if it's in the water it's slowly leaching toxins and things out it's a giant filter these are the lungs of the earth the waters the blood and all this stuff we're all part of it so the next time you go clearing out the sides of your lake or river or whatever it is just realize that that's how much quicker the water's going to go and um, that's one to grow on. K-I-M-T-U. For all my relations.